So I've had this giant log in my garage since 2014. The goal was to use it as a base for an anvil for blacksmithing. I wanted to learn smithing to open up some capabilities in the workshop, like making tools and heavier duty metal hardware, but I knew it was gonna be a challenge to cut that log down to the right size, so I figured I'd tackle a couple other things first. Well, like I frequently say here, then life got in the way. So let's attach some legs. Finally, in 2019, Essential Craftsman released this blacksmithing course. I got real excited about it again and thought this is gonna be the year that I do this. So I signed up for the class, I got an anvil, came in a cardboard box, which was a big surprise, and I picked up a forge. I was tempted to make my own, but the cost for supplies was actually around the same price as buying one, so I went with the Devil's Forge instead. And then life got in the way again. Fast forward to 2020. For Father's Day, my wife and son got me some blacksmithing tong blinks from Ken's Custom Iron. It'd be rude not to use that present right away, so I had to get back to blacksmithing. First, I needed to level off the top of the log. I used an electric hand planer for this that I tuned up per tips from a shipwright's tips, and that worked great. I think that's good enough. Now that I had a flat reference surface to measure from, I needed to cut the log to rough size. One measure of how tall to cut it is that the top of the anvil should be at about knuckle height. This is supposed to help you by making the face of the hammer naturally line up with the anvil. With the mark in place, I could start cutting. If I had a longer chainsaw bar, I wouldn't have had to move around and cut from different places so much on the log. Those cuts didn't all line up for me in the end, as you can see here, but I gave myself some padding when I marked that cut line so it was no big deal. With the top and the bottom now flat, the anvil didn't rock much, so the top was fine, but there was still a decent wobble on the bottom of the log. A few blacksmithing resources I found on the internet mentioned making feet on the bottom at this point. These three pads are supposed to reduce the wobbliness. It still wasn't as good as burying your stump three feet in the ground like some books say you should do, but it was still an improvement. So I was originally thinking about offsetting the anvil to the, either the front or the back so that you can stand closer to it and really work over top of your work. But I just watched a video from Black Bear Forge on anvil orientation. He made a good argument for having the horn in your hammer hand because there's this hardy hole here, and if you have a tool sitting in there, for example, a cutting tool, and you forget to take it out before the next time that you swing your, your hammer hand down here, then you could hit your hand on that tool. So in theory, that would mean that I am right-handed, which means my hammer hand is on the right, so I should want this back here. But my son might be left-handed, and I want him to be able to use this too. So if we stick it in the center, it's still plenty close enough to either side that whether you're left-handed or right-handed, it'll still work. That's my theory anyway. That's good enough, I think. Now I could start securing the anvil to the log. I went with a method again recommended by Scott Wadsworth of Essential Craftsman, which he based on a design attributed to HRH in the book Practical Blacksmithing. 
so it's wandering while I'm drilling because I'm trying to get kind of close to the base. I'm glad I put that line down. I'm gonna pound some nails in and that should help keep it from moving. Yeah, that's good. There's a ton of different ways you can do this, but Scott made it sound like he really researched this and so he'd know better than me. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh well. Alexa, what's 19.1 divided by 2? 19.1 divided by 2 With the anvil secure, I started working on a lip to go around the top of the log, again recommended by Scott. The idea is that this turns the top of the log into kind of a tray for holding rivets or other things you might be working with. Then I fired up the forge for the first time to make some tool holders. It was totally not necessary to use the forge for this kind of a shape. What was I supposed to do? Not use it? How was I so wrong on the math? Next, I got out the Eastwood MIG welder, which is always a good time. And I used it to attach the rebar to those brackets. And lastly, I attach some retractable wheels to the log. I originally planned to make some sort of a custom option, but these things used to be 60 bucks and now they're 36 for a pack of four. Meanwhile, I already took a lot of time working on this stand. So I caved and I took the easy route and they do seem to work great. So after years of procrastination, it obviously felt awesome to have this thing done. 
Still have a ton more urgent projects to work on for now, so it'll be a while before I can spend a bunch of time on blacksmithing again. But at least now I'll be ready for it when I do have time. Thanks for watching.